Thanks, John. Well, first it was Rome, where the resignation of Silvio Berlusconi's ministers at the weekend left a weak coalition teetering on the brink of collapse. Now it's Washington, where Republican Tea Party right-wingers have blocked a deal on the federal budget, forcing the shutdown of government offices and institutions and threatening a market meltdown. Well, you might say it's out of the frying pan into the fire for Matt Fry, who's just left Washington to become our Europe editor. We'll speak to him live in a moment. But first, he sent this from Rome. The capital in Washington, D.C., the temple of a democracy that used to describe itself as the greatest on earth. The Enlightenment may have been born in Europe, but it took America to turn its noble principles into a form of government. And the only thing that this place borrowed from Rome was the august architecture. In fact, most Americans used to laugh, like the rest of us, at the operatic foibles of modern Italian politics. The fisticuffs in Parliament, the pawn queen politicians, the follies of a country that produced more governments than Christmases. And for the last two decades, the lip-curling outrageousness that is Silvio Berlusconi, the silver-tongued cruise ship crooner turned media mogul, turned loose-tongued prime minister, turned convict. He kept getting re-elected on promises of fulfilling the Italian dream, prosperity without responsibility, until the Euro crisis dethroned him. In Washington, where a jittery president was facing re-election and the economy still lacked a pulse, the Democrats breathed a sigh of relief. With Berlusconi gone, there was less of a chance that Italy could bring the Euro house crashing down and cripple America's weak economy with collateral damage. How things have changed. Today, the rest of the world and the markets don't know what vexes them more a dysfunctional America or a dysfunctional Italy. And the tangled web of the global economy, both are potentially devastating despite their different sizes. America is being held to ransom by the extreme wing of the Republican Party, who hate Obama more than they love the country's economy. Italy is being held to ransom by one man who thinks he can topple a government in order to save his own skin. Remember America's founding fathers? Their biggest fear was a president who behaved like a king. Congress was meant to provide checks and balances. But ultimately, this lot were all gentlemen who eventually preferred compromise over conflict. More recently, Tip O'Neill, the veteran Democrat Speaker of the House, regularly played golf with Ronald Reagan, the Republican icon. Deals were made on the 19th hole. But those days are gone. John Boehner, the Speaker of today's House, can play golf all he likes with Barack Obama, but he's no longer in control of his own Republican ranks. American politics has stopped being polite, and the world's greatest democracy is tearing itself apart in an eat-as-much-as-you-can buffet of cannibalism. Have a nice day. Well, Matt joins us now live from Rome. What have you managed to unearth there? Well, Cathy, to coin a phrase, it looks as if Silvio Berlusconi is living his own version of Breaking Bad. I mean, this is a man who's managed to defy his skeptics and critics and basically find political resurrection over and over again. But tonight, in the building behind me, the Prime Minister's office, this is Prime Minister Letta, the negotiation seems to be going against Berlusconi. He seemed to have lost a, a crucial number of MPs from his own party. They will probably vote with the government tomorrow. Thus, the vote of no confidence will turn out to be a vote of confidence. And we've just heard a few minutes ago the Prime Minister Letta has rejected the resignation of the five Berlusconi ministers in the cabinet, perhaps because he feels confident enough that they will, after all, come on side. So maybe this has indeed been Silvio Berlusconi's last chance saloon, and he has lost. Well, with your old Washington hat on momentarily, what do you think will be the impact of all the shenanigans on Capitol Hill uh, in the rest of Europe? Well, in this country, the problem is that one enormous ego has defied every institution of the state, whether it's the judiciary, the government, um, or indeed uh, parliament. In America, the problem is that one wing of the Republican Party keeps defying President Obama. And this defiance will continue as America approaches the midterm elections. Because in the Republican Party nowadays, to defy the president, even if it means adopting some bonkers policies, 
is popular. It wins you primaries. And if you can win your primary in states like Tennessee or Kentucky, it means that you're in the House of Representatives. Effectively, the moderate Republican Party of old is dead. The extremist Republican Party of today rules. Matt in Rome, thank you very much.